Oh, welcome back to the vlog from home in sunny Auckland. Actually, not sunny at all. It's been windy and raining since like November. Uh, so I got a new vlog camera. Hopefully that makes the picture quality look a bit better and maybe even the sound, I don't know. We'll have to see once we edit it. But um, today I'm talking about the new Garmin 1040 Solar, which I've recently acquired. Yes, I know I have the tether attached. Don't hate me for it. Um, it was expensive and I want to keep it if it falls off. I don't want it to get destroyed. Um, so I've had this for a few weeks now. Had plenty of opportunities to ride with it, a couple of outdoor rides. Plenty of indoor rides. It's pretty much where most of my training has been lately. Um, just due to the weather and the fact that uh, the roads are falling apart. <clears throat> but it's been awesome, so I'm going to talk about it today, talk about a few of the features. Um, I'm about to head overseas for the negative split carbon tour of Samoa, which is a five day tour. Uh, there's two stages a day. I think there's one stage, uh, one day that has one stage, but all the other days have two stages. Um, so I'm looking forward to using this um, over there as well. And then um, because of the solar feature and the fact that hopefully it's not raining every day in summer, um, it'll actually last ages and, and even get a bit of charge from the sun. So um, let's dive into it. All right, so first of all, let's have a look at size. Um, there's my older Garmin Edge 520. Uh, and that's the 1040 solar next to it. Massive difference, screen's almost like twice the size. Um, and then above and below the screen, these little red areas here uh, are there for the solar charging. Thickness wise, they're almost identical. When they sit flat, they're almost exactly the same. Um, and then, cool thing about this one on the back is the tabs where it attaches to the bike. It looks like it's made of stainless steel. Maybe it's aluminium, either aluminium or stainless steel, but won't break those tabs off, which I haven't broken the tabs off the 520, but a lot of people do, um, and then it won't attach to the bike. So um, putting metal tabs on there, very good idea. And then the other big difference is that the 1040 is touchscreen. So the 520 didn't have a touchscreen, and it's got uh, two seven buttons around the side. The 1040's just got the on off button at the top start stop button and the go back button uh, everything else is done just by touching the screen so I fired it up here um, really nice easy to read screen I can actually read that through the camera screen it's so good um, and then obviously touch screen so I can scroll through the uh, workout modes I've set up the cool thing about this as well is you can do the setup in the Garmin app on your phone rather than having to do it all uh, via here, so that makes it a bit easier uh, if you want to use your phone. Previously on the 520, you had to do everything on the device, um, so much easier here. And then if I uh, you know, jump into one of my modes, I'm not even using all the possible fields you can. That's sort of what I would typically use there for a ride. But um, you know, so much data there, so easy to read. Uh, you've got the navigation screen there as well. Um, that's pedaling dynamics for my left right power meter. So, um, so much screen real estate there. And previously, I mean, the 520 did do some navigation, but it was really bad, so I never used it. Whereas the navigation now on the 1040 is so good um, that I find myself using it a lot. And that sort of makes the bigger screen worthwhile as well because you get a really clear view of the map. It's even got a feature in here where if I wanted to go for a training ride, um, I can just go into navigation, say I want to do a, a 40k ride, a 60k ride um, in a loop or a point to point, and it'll find popular routes and create a ride and then just follow the map. So um, very cool feature. So I'm just gonna jump into courses here. I've set some courses up for uh, the tour of Samoa just to have a look at how the navigation works. And so it's got the um, course there in the map, and then um, so it'll obviously I'm in New Zealand at the moment, so I don't have the map. But then it's also got this feature called Climb Pro. Now, 
I still haven't decided if I love Klein Pro or not yet. So you get a overall profile here at the top of the course and then Klein Pro breaks down the major climbs. And even if you're not on navigation mode, um, it can be set so that this climb comes up on the screen when you reach it. And so you can see the profile as you're riding it. And I've had that on by default, but I still haven't decided if I love it. Um, so sometimes if I'm riding up a hill, I, I don't want to know that I still have three and a half Ks to go. It'd be nice to not know what's happening. Um, so I still haven't decided if, I, uh, if I'll keep that on or not. For now it's on and I've been using it. <clears throat> Another really cool feature is the mountain bike trail navigation, which I've previously only had this on my phone on trail forks, but this is kind of like having uh, trail forks built into the dash. So it's got all the nearby parks and trails loaded, um, which is very cool. Um, where are we? Totara Park, somewhere I ride quite frequently. All, all the trails are preloaded there, so you can um, pick which trail you want to ride, get navigation to the trail. You know, you can see if all the trails link up if you want to do a loop ride or something like that. So, uh, very cool to have that on here. I really like that feature. Another feature that's new here is now having the multi GNSS multi band. So, that's using Previously you'd just have like GPS and then there was, there was the GPS and uh, GLONASS. Now you've got this multi-GNS which is even more accurate than before. And um, so accurate that when you look at a ride um, after you've done it on the, on the app or on Garmin Connect, you can even pick out what side of the road you were riding on. And it even works really well uh, in the forest on gravel and um, cross-country rides which previously you know in the heavy tree cover uh, the 520 would sometimes drop out and not be accurate and the and the speed wouldn't be very good and then you just end up with some straight lines in your course so um, the upgrades that have been made to that are very good so I'll just do a quick weight comparison the old 520 edge coming in at 63 grams 1040 solar 132 so it's about double the weight but that's because it's double the size it's got more metal on it um, bigger battery bigger screen and touch screen layer over the top as well so understandable but at the end of the day 60 grams is not a very big deal but um the biggest feature the, the thing that drew me to it the most was the solar charging so um, having a massive battery anyway with impressive battery life and then you've got the additional uh, little panels at the top and the bottom to charge for solar. So it won't, won't charge from flat. It's not like a case of leaving it in the sun and it'll charge itself up. But if you're riding on a sunny day and using the battery, it's also going to top the battery up a little bit. So it's just extending the battery life a wee bit, not necessarily um, acting as a charger from scratch. So um, there you go. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of a few weeks or, or nearly a month in. On the, on the 1040 solar and really happy with it. I think it's a really cool device. Um, huge upgrade on my Edge 520, which I've held on to for years. And to be fair, it's never never failed me and it's still going strong. But um, I did read online, someone said, if you buy the 1040 solar, you won't have to buy another Garmin again. And I, I sort of can't think of another feature at the moment that I would wanna add. So very happy, very good device. So there we are, that is the Garmin 1040 Solar. I'm really chuffed with it. Um, if you've got one, leave a comment, let me know what you think. <clears throat> Up next, I've got a couple of weeks before I head away for the Tour of Samoa, so I'm gonna be stuck right into tour prep leading up to that, a lot of training. A lot of indoor training, unfortunately, just because of the weather, and it doesn't look like it's gonna get better anytime soon. Um, but I'm gonna try and get heaps of content um, at the tour as well and just traveling in general I haven't left the country since I think 2019 because pre-COVID so really excited to uh, to be going overseas again back to Samoa somewhere I've been a couple of times before and I really love it there um, great people great place nice and warm beautiful country looking forward to catching up with friends there uh, looking forward to actually catching up with some friends who have left New Zealand 
moved to Samoa, so I can't wait to see them. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, please subscribe. Um, trying really hard to grow this channel. I do enjoy making videos. Um, please let me know if there's anything you'd like me to do a video on, anything you'd like to see on the channel. But um, until next time, take care. Thank you for watching.